they are unicellular they use cilia or flagella for locomotion all the body has small hair like structures all over the body known as cilia or flagella and that help in the movement of the organism that is known as the locomotion then they can be either autotrophic or heterotrophic they can prepare their own food or sometimes they depend on others for their food and examples would be diatoms unicellular algae as well as the protozoans so the structure of paramecium looks like this it has cilia which all around the body hair like structures which help in the locomotion and inside the body there will be a water canal and there will be food vacuole for the intake of food and for the intake of food and for the removal of the waste from the body and the unicellular organism common unicellular organism we know is amoeba amoeba comes as example under cholera this is a unicellular bacteria which also comes under protista so next moving on moving on to fungi fungi are heterotrophic they depend on others for their food they have a proper cell wall and cell wall is made up of a substance known as chitin the cell wall is made up of a hard substance known as chitin and they usually they are also unicellular but they have the capacity to become multicellular they are unicellular but they have the capacity to become multicellular in later stages of life they feed on decaying organic material what is decaying material any food we throw in the garbage or any garbage over a period of some months or years with the help of microorganisms it decays so that is known as the decaying organic material so this some type of fungi feed on the decayed organic material so when they are feeding on the organic decayed material they are known as saprotrophs and this type of nutrition is known as saprotrophic nutrition so this mode of nutrition is known as saprotrophic nutrition then some fungi live in symbiotic relationship with other organisms that means they live in a relationship together with some organisms like blue green algae and lichens we see lichens growth on the bark of the trees right sometimes on the bark of the trees some brownish greenish color growth develops that is nothing but the blue green algae that is nothing but the blue green algae and lichens so symbiotic life forms are known as the lichens lichens grow as a growth on the bark of the trees so examples of fungi are yeast penicillium aspergillus mucor etc and this is how aspergillus and penicillium looks this is about fungi next fourth kingdom is plantae plantae are multicellular organisms with cell wall they have a specific cell wall all the plant cells and they are autotrophs plantae is the only group which is autotroph that means can prepare its own food how do it prepare how does it prepare its own food by the help of photosynthesis so presence of chlorophyll is a distinct feature in this plantae because which they are capable of doing photosynthesis so photosynthetic activity in the plant is carried out with the help of green pigment called chlorophyll so with the help of photosynthetic activity plants prepare their own food so all plants are included this in this group in the plantae all plants come this plantae is further divided into five subgroups based on based on increasing complexity of their body organization how complexly further the body is organized and on based of this complexity of the body they are further classified into subgroups these subgroups are thallophyta bryophyta gymnos <coughs> thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperms and angiosperms in detail we will be studying about these five groups later then last kingdom will be called as animalia animalia are eukaryotic multicellular but they do not have any cell walls and they are heterotrophs depend on others for their food they can't prepare their own food and mostly all the animals come under the kingdom animalia 
this animalia kingdom again depending on the increasing complexity of the body organization increasing complexity of the body organization animalia are further classified into 10 subgroups these 10 subgroups are porifera cylindrata platyhelminthes <coughs> platyhelminthes nematoda annelida arthropoda then there is mollusca echinodermata protocordata and vertebrata this vertebrata again sub sub classified into five other small groups these five small groups are pieces amphibians reptiles apes and mammals vertebrata means organisms having the vertebral column on the backbone so fishes frogs reptiles and crocodiles apes and mammals everybody has that vertebral column on the backbone right so those come under the category vertebrata now let's see in detail about these five sub kingdoms of plantae so the fifth fourth kingdom in the pitaker classification is plantae so in this plantae mostly all the plants come so the kingdom plantae is again divided into five sub groups on what basis these sub groups are divided based on whether the plant body is well differentiated and having distinct components so whether the plant body is well differentiated or having distinct components and whether the different different whether the differentiated plant body has special tissues for transport of water and other substances within it so first is whether the plant has well differentiated body and distinct components and the next is whether the differentiated plant body has special tissues for the transport of water and other substances within it and the last is based on whether they bear the seeds and if they bear the seeds whether the seeds are naked or enclosed within the fruit so ability to bear the seeds and whether the seeds are enclosed within the fruits or whether the seeds are outside the fruit so it is classified into five subgroups so out of the five subgroups the first one is thallophyta so what plants come under category thallophyta plant body simplest thallus type so not much well differentiated plant body here plant body is not differentiated into roots stems or leaves it is a simple plant body no specialized structures and commonly known as algae algae whatever it grows right suppose if there is stagnant water in a bucket over a period of few months then greenish color bluish color thing grows at the bottom that is algae then on the barks of the trees also algae grows so that doesn't have specific parts of the plant right the examples are spirogyra chara volvox and cladophora these are the examples of the plants which come under the kingdom subgroup thallophyta and they look somewhat like this cladophora no specific body differentiation into roots stems or leaves and spirogyra next subclass is bryophyta so in bryophyta the plant body in bryophyta the plant body is differentiated into stem and leaf like structures not very much differentiated but little differentiated into stem and leaf like structures vascular system is ab absent that means no transport system for the transportation of water and minerals and there is no specialized tissue for the transportation of water minerals and food no xylem and phloem xylem and phloem are specialized vascular tissues for the transportation of food right then bryophytes are known as amphibians of the plant kingdom what are the amphibians amphibians are usually frogs reptiles these are known as the amphibians of animals here bryophyta is known as the amphibian of plant kingdom and because why they are known as amphibians because without water they cannot complete their life cycle that is the reason they are known as amphibians of plant kingdom examples are marchantia ferns plants then forestry plants moss plants and they look somewhat like this this is about bryophyta after thallophyta the second kingdom is bryophyta in the plant subgroup bryophyta plant body is differentiated into stem and leaf like structures exactly they are not stem and leaf but they look somewhat like that 
Vascular system is absent, that means xylem and phloem are known as the vascular tissues which help in conduction of water, food, minerals. So, no specialized tissue is there for the transportation of water, minerals and food. So, in bryophyta, plant body is differentiated into stem and leaf like structure. No vascular tissue is present for the transportation of food, water and minerals. And it is this group is known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom. Generally amphibians is referred in animals and amphibians in the animals are frogs, reptiles etc. But this kingdom is known as the amphibians of plant kingdom because their life cycle will not be completed without water. So also known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom because they need water to complete a part of their life cycle. So examples of these group is moss plant and marchantia plant. It looks somewhat like this marchantia. Next subgroup is pteridophyta. In pteridophyta, the plant is very differentiated into roots, stems and leaves. Vascular system is present. That means there is specialized tissue for the transportation of food and water. They do not bear any seeds. No seeds will be produced in these plants. Reproductive organs are inconspicuous, so called as cryptogamy, that is hidden reproductive organs. This group of plants are known as cryptogams because they have hidden reproductive organs. No specific reproductive organs are seen. Thallophytes, bryophytes and pteridophytes bear naked embryos that are called as spores. So, with the help of spores only these three groups, the first three subgroups of plants they reproduce. Thallophyta, bryophyta and pteridophyta have naked embryos which have spore like structures. Here you see dot dot structures. These are spores which help in reproduction. So they do not have proper distinct reproductive organs. So they have hidden reproductive organs. That's why they are known as cryptogams. Whereas next to two subgroups, gymnosperms and angiosperms have very prominent reproductive organs. So they will be known as phalerogams. Here it then reproductive organs means cryptogams. Gymnosperms and angiosperms will be known as phalerogams. So examples of pteridophyta plants are Marsilia, ferns and horsetails. Usually the ornamental plants, the plants used for decoration in our houses all come in these categories. So let's move to gymnosperms and angiosperms.